The word geek as we know it today is a term representing various different subcultures within society. The stereotypical geek may have an awkward appearance, often sporting a pair of spectacles, acne, perhaps a bad haircut, and will rarely leave home without an intellectual read, a comic book. However, these graphic novels still have an ardent following of fans that may not be as geeky as you might think. I have a huge collection of comics. Um, I have thousands, but I have never counted them. Uh, I probably have about 4,000 comics. I'm trying to slim down. I have quite a lot. I've got over, say, 100 single issues wow. and uh, at least 250 collected editions and hardcovers. In terms of my comic book collection, I think I would say I have more of the graphic novels than the comics. Um, I've been collecting a couple of titles for about 10 years. I've, uh, I've been a comic book fan since I guess I was six or seven years old probably. Uh, the first comic I ever got was, actually the first comic I got in, in the tra really traditional sense was a comic called Monster Fun. Hmm, comic books, fascinating. Now how does one develop this pastime and what's it like being a comic buff? Well, when I was growing up in the 1980s, not that many people were into comics. I was into comics, and I kind of liked that, the fact that nobody else was into it. You know when you're at school and you like bands that other people don't like? It's like a kind of cool thing, it's your own little secret. And comics was kind of like that. And there was maybe one other pal, two other pals, that I would give stuff out to and let them read it. They were kind of casual readers. So it was quite nice, it was a cosy little world. And comic stores were little clubs where we hid away from the real world and chatted about Spider-Man and stuff like that, you know? Whereas now it's just open, it's like, it's like Hollywood now, it's like it's a supermarket when you walk into a comic store. You can actually bring women and children into them now, you know? It gives you a sense of belonging to a, to a, a closed society almost. You know, it, it, it's, it's nice that it's, a, that it's a niche, and I think even now it's a niche to a certain extent. And it, it, it becomes a, the kind of scene where you go to the conventions, you're meeting the same people in a lot of different contexts, everybody knows everybody else. There's no artificial distance between the creators and the fans. Most of the creators got into it by being fans in the first instance. I, you know, I like it that it's small and intimate and it's self-contained, and I've always sort of liked that about it, really. Well, comic culture has kind of had its ups and downs over the years. I mean, the first time I think it really hit mainstream outside of the comic book medium was in the 70s, early, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s with some of the cartoons. And then it's laid fallow again for a long, long time. The usual comic book will contain a hero fighting crime, battling their arch rival. Recently, this genre has become immensely popular in Hollywood. The biggest grossing films these days are often comic book adaptations. There's been a long history of comics and movies being working together. This is not something brand new. Uh, there was an amazing Batman movie serial in 1943 where, where Batman and Robin were both quite short and quite fat and wore very heavy kind of felt costumes that didn't move very They were the complete opposite of Christopher Nolan and, uh, and all of that. Now all of a sudden, there's so many comic book movies uh, coming out. I hope they're gonna backfire because if people might get sick of it. It's just way too many all of a sudden. Everybody wants to push their character out there. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird to me as well. It, it's like, a, it's a phenomenon, I suppose. Hollywood likes stuff that is already there, it's already made, so you know, they see a book and they can tell what it's gonna hopefully look like when it's finished, so I mean, I think it's just kind of an easy, easy way to get good ideas uh, and get people excited about it. Comic books are, are like ready-made storyboards, you know, I mean, they, they lend themselves, arguably lend themselves, Alan Moore would disagree, but they arguably lend themselves to adaptation and I think, uh, you know, provided a huge source of, uh, of, of, of subject matter for filmmakers particularly as special effects have uh, evolved and they've been able to put those escapades up on screen more authentically. Um, it's kind of forced a sort of change of opinion about comic books. Comic books anyway have, uh, have lost something of their stigma uh, now and are seen more as an adult medium than a, ch a kid's medium really. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the transfer from there to film is kind of, you know, logical really. However, these adaptations aren't always marketed as comic book films, which can result in the creators not receiving full credit for their work. How much recognition do we deserve? I think if you work in a profession like this, if you, if you have the, the, the luck and the privilege to turn something that you love into a job, into a paying job, 
then you have absolutely no rights to complain about anything. You know, recognition, it's great if it comes, but it's not yours by right, really. There are some my, more minor books these days that are coming out and becoming movies that it seems almost Hollywood is masking the fact that they came from comic books. And I think those are, those are sad instances where the creators aren't getting the credit that they deserve. But then again, you look at success of, again, I'll, I'll go back to Wanted because that's another comic book movie that's not a superhero movie that actually hit big this past summer. Mark Miller and J.T. Jones, the artist, were given a lot of credit. They were really involved in the creative process. They had you know, cameos in the film. They invited to the premiere. And they're reaping the benefits of that in terms of not just financial success off of Wanted, but also in terms of building their reputations based on their work there. And I think in that case, those are two creators who are taking advantage of what they've gotten and are running with it. So it's, it's a mixed bag. Now the comic guys have become superstars. You know, if you go to Hollywood now, it's really bizarre, but there's really well-known writers and actors and uh, directors who come up and sort of spot you in the street. It's really, really odd. Ten years ago this wasn't the case, but there was a generation of guys, I think, um, who grew up like me in the 1980s, loving Dark Knight and Watchmen and all that stuff, who are now very influential in Hollywood. So the comic guys are treated like rock stars whenever they come to Hollywood because these guys love this stuff, you know? So it's great. This is the best period, I think, for a comic book guy probably ever to have been working. It's brilliant. The term geek casts a wide net and can give a false impression that all geeks are the same. However, those who are proud to be called geek are often characterised by their individuality, creativity and unique personalities. It's precisely these qualities that can lead many geeks to huge success. I think the world would be a duller place without geeks, you know. I mean, if you think about it, geeks gave us Star Wars, geeks gave us Superman, geeks gave us Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, I just think for people to be so into something, you know, it's, it, and, and do a good job on it, it becomes infectious. Their enthusiasm becomes infectious and it makes the world a brighter place. What we have now is sort of like gap geeks, you know, they're kind of like, uh, it's like a mainstream interpretation of the geek. What geek is and why geek has become acceptable again or, or, or a non-negative term is because all it ever meant was being enthusiastic about something and, uh, and loving it unconditionally and not being afraid to tell people how much or what, how much you know and how much you love it. Uh, it did happen to obviously coincide with the love of stuff like science fiction or comic books or, you know, but there will always be, there are always more geekier geeks than you. I'm a, a chav compared to some of the geeks I know, you know. Uh, the, uh, they will always be around and the more sort of mainstream geek becomes the more the really entrenched geeks will just back into the corners and become even more sort of uh, you know resolutely islandish <laughs>